Welcome back, everybody, to LV Radio. I'm so excited to have our guest here today, Kara. We were just talking before we got started and already have lots of things to chat about. Um, I think that maybe is just something that comes along with moms having a conversation. There's always stuff that we have to talk about our kids. Um, but today I want to introduce her. She is the founder of Core for Parenting, which was founded in 2020 during the pandemic. We know founding companies during the pandemic um, happened a lot. We've talked to a lot of business owners, including myself, um, that founded a company during that time. But she was an early childhood educator, and she pivoted to creating courses to set parents up for success in raising school world ready kids. And I'm really excited to dive into this as a parent and as someone that also started a business during the pandemic. Um, I'm excited for our conversation today. So welcome to the LLV Radio podcast, Kara. Thank you so much, Brooke. I, I'm very excited to be here and see what this conversation, where it takes us. Yes, for sure. So before you launched your company now and, and started creating these courses, Tell us a little bit about your career prior to this. I'd love to know a little more. So I describe myself as a lifetime lover of littles, and I followed the path of whatever was going to be in service to them, and that did lead me to the classroom. Um, so I have my master's degree in education, and I had options, and I thought, I just really want to teach these tiny people while they're alert and alive and open and receptive, and their brains are just ready to develop a lifetime love of learning. Um, and so that had me in, in preschool and kindergarten classrooms, and and I loved it. I loved it. But what I started to notice, Brooke, uh, year after year is that the kids kept coming to school less and less ready to learn mm -hmm. in every area of the classroom. Their cognition was there, right? They knew what parents thought they were supposed to know to be successful. ABCs, one, two, three is colors, numbers. But they were really not understanding how to work in a small or large group setting with their social emotional skills and their interpersonal skills or how to understand how to process an emotion so that they could control their body and respond appropriately. So um, I actually left the classroom before the pandemic hit. I had this nudge that said, there is a way to solve this. And it starts at home with parents between birth and five, because 85% of foundational brain growth, the literal size of your baby's brain, is done forming by five years old when you send them to me, your kindergarten teacher. And I'm left with, oh my gosh, I want to solve this. So let's back up. I said, let's solve it. So I started creating the core four courses and curriculum um, while I had tween girls at home. They were nine and 11 when I got this idea, um, but I decided to go back to another loving job that I had over the years as a nanny. And so I was with the small little human beings and I was cultivating their brains and I was using these strategies that turned into my courses and I was seeing it work. So when 2020 hit and the world turned on a dime and parents were struggling, I said, well, there's my sign. It's time to take it to the world. Yes. Uh, it was definitely a time of struggle for parents at that time. I know that, that my kids, I have a four-year-old, almost five-year-old, and a seven-year-old. And it was when that pandemic hit, they were not fully in elementary school or anything like that. They were still a very much, my daughter a little bit older, but was still kind of in that under five category. And it was a lot to be put back onto parents too. You know, it, it was something we were just confused. What do we do? Do we, you know, our perspective of as a parent of education is always kind of funny, I find, even as former educator, we're always thinking that like, we need to be doing things like we would learn now, not like they're supposed to be learning at that age. And so it was really hard and, and no teacher was understanding, especially in the lower grade, especially in that, that birth to five, what the heck do we do with these kids that are home? Like, how do we provide anything for them? Um, and I know I remember just like searching, what is out there? What do I do? Like, and I was in a weird place because I was just launching my company too. And so I had gone from being 
a part-time stay-at-home mom for a long time and running a freelance business, but still like having a, a good portion of like taking my kids to activities and like doing a lot of stuff during the day to not doing that for like about a six month period of time and then right back into it, but we couldn't go anywhere. <laughs> so I, I remember just thinking, uh, and my mom is a, a teacher for same for birth to five too. And I was just like, mom, what do I do? Like, and so a lot of times we were like, let's FaceTime with Nanny Jill because we need something like help mom. And she would like play her like ukulele or like read a book or something like that. Um, but it was definitely a struggle for parents. So it was a, a perfect time for you to bring this, bring this into the world. Why don't you tell us a little bit more about kind of what, what do these courses really bring to life? Like, so if I, as a parent, I still have an under five, year under five kid, um, what can it do to help support me as a parent and, and taking care of, you know, helping with that education so early on? So I think what is, like you were saying, there's different perspectives, right? There's the mom perspective, there's the adult perspective. And I think what's so vital for us as moms to understand is that we need to flip the switch and see the world through our kids' perspective. And that can be a really hard thing to do, especially when during COVID, the stress levels around us were so high. And so the value of the courses is meant to give you tools to help your child meet those four readiness skill areas that will turn into a kindergarten readiness and lifetime of learning experience. But it really is about learning how to connect with your child, learning how to observe who they are, learning what's naturally easy for them and what poses more of a struggle, understanding what their triggers are, learning when communication works and when it's not a great time to try to talk it out, learning what type of words uh, resonate and impact your child's ability to stop, listen, and process and problem solve with you. And so what I really bring to parents is this opportunity to learn how to collaborate with their child, to develop this relationship now in their youngest years when they still think you hung the moon, right? Let's use that to our advantage. We win these toddler years by learning how to build a relationship on the core four connectors, mm -hmm. open communication, honesty, uh, trust that you can believe my words and I can believe yours and that we can respect each other enough to have these conversations and problem solve together. And I always tell people, we win the toddler years, we've already won the teenage years, right? If we mm. do this work now, mm. it is the payoff that helps us grow with them through every age and stage of their development. Yeah. Oh, that's, I've read so much about that early childhood and how little we are doing like in society to help support it in, in so many ways. And it's really interesting because now, like I was playing with the third educator that I've interviewed um, over the last two days and everybody like hit this period of time in like the 2008, 2000, like 12 period where, and this was actually like second, mostly secondary educators that I, I was talking to, but where like the kids were just not receptive in the teenage years. They were not receptive to the education that was being given to them. And they just didn't really want to be there. Um, and how hard that can be on the educator when they're wanting just as much as the birth to five to really connect and have that, you know, engagement. And I mean, I, I'm assuming, and I, I obviously I'm sure that you, you would speak on this too, that it goes back to those early years. But do you have any advice for parents that, um, you know, their kids are out of that birth to five? What can they still do to, I know I'm even thinking of my daughter, like, I feel like we did a decent job with that, but also like we ran two years during a pandemic of pivotal time in her life that was chaos for our family in so many ways as two working parents. Um, and, and I see some areas where like 
some of that, we need to establish more trust with her and all of that. So what are some things that parents that can do if their kids have gotten a little bit older too? Include them in the option to be part of the problem solving. So mm -hmm. that means listening, right? Instead, uh, and, and inviting, inviting them in. Uh, so first of all, only ever do it when everyone's already in a calm state, right? We don't plan these conversations. We can't do that. If it starts with, hey, after dinner, I need to talk with you. You've already lost them. <laughs> now they've started making things up in their head that may or may not be true, and you've already lost them. So when you as the adult recognize, okay, the environment that we're in right now feels calm and connected. We just finished a family movie. Everyone's feeling pretty good. Or that was an ex, we're sitting down to dinner and everyone's just kind of in it, right? That is an amazing opportunity to open a conversation and say, I've noticed that you and I are struggling to figure out how homework gets done on time every night. I've had some ideas of what I think might help, but I'd like to hear what you think might help. If you invite them to be the idea maker, they feel invested, they feel heard, they feel trusted, they feel respected. It's all of those connected relationship pieces. And, you know, maybe their idea is not something that you're going to be able to approve. <laughs> maybe you are going to have to say, wow, that's an interesting idea. Okay, now can you hear what I have to think about this? Mm -hmm. But simply laying down what's going to happen and then expecting them to respond is not the way to build those core four connectors. Mm -hmm. You may not always get to a problem solving situation and feel like you nailed it. And in those cases, I recommend if you're at an impasse, right? If you've given your ideas and they've given their ideas and they're just not jiving. Mm -hmm. How about if we try yours this week? And if it's just not working, we'll come back and have this conversation again. And there you are support, you're, uh, supporting those open lines of communication that never close. Mm -hmm. we, can, we can do this again, but let's try it. See if it works. Yeah. No, that's, that's such good advice. And I think we oftentimes, you know, we only have, especially if you're a working parent, like you have these little pockets of time with your family, which can be such quality, amazing times and, and everything. But I think sometimes we look at it as, oh, we just want to have fun with our kids during that time and like not handle any of the hard stuff. But I think that what I'm hearing too from you is that it can be both. Like you could be having these great family moments, but maybe that's a really good time to, you know, have some of these conversations of things that are coming up in the family um, and being able to discuss that. And I, I love that because usually our weekends are really fun as a family, but sometimes the, you know, we need to kind of think about some of those conversations and, and sometimes they come up naturally, which I think is the, the beautiful thing when they can, you know, come up and in, in conversation, my, both of my kids are very inquisitive and, and love to ask questions. They both go to a Montessori school too. So they're used to, used to being part of leading their own education in so many ways. And I'm really thankful that we, that we have that for them um, because it's made us too, as parents, like do things a little bit differently and ask questions in different ways. Um, and it, it's constantly something that we're, we're trying to bring up. Um, but I love that you took something that you saw happening through you know, teaching, but also like, obviously the pandemic made it even more and you turned it into a course. And, and so shifting gears a little bit um, and that kind of created a whole, a whole business for you. So is there anything that you wish you had known when you began your business um, that you've maybe learned now that you, that you wish you would have known? Oh, so many things. <laughs> Brooke, I can, uh, as a former educator, I know you're going to understand this. <laughs> um, as a teacher, I knew exactly how 
to organize my day, to write my lesson plans, to be flexible in the moment inside the classroom if it had to shift. I had I had the framework figured out. An online business owner, totally different ballgame. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, what I wish I had known was that I needed I needed to broaden my thinking. Mm-hmm. Right. That I, I couldn't just walk into an online space and teach. There were yeah. so many other pieces that had to come into play. Um, and, you know, if I'm being totally honest, I put myself out there. And then, of course, when, when you need resources, they show up. Mm-hmm. And so the resources did show up and the digital education showed up and a local company who was a nonprofit and really interested in investing in rural initiatives to make large impacts globally said, um, we have some resources if you'd like to learn them. And so take the education as it's presented to you. Just walk Mm -hmm. in with this open mind. Okay. My heart's mission is Mm -hmm. right. My social impact desire is, yeah, but, what are the things I need to learn in order to reach the people so that I can make the impact? Mm. Yes. I love that so much. And it's so true. I mean, when we're really connected with our why of why we're starting a business in general, um, and we really lean into that and don't let ourselves go astray, just focusing on the money or the the actual end goal, um, we usually things come into play because we've put that either out into the universe or whatever way you want to look at it. But we've, we've tried to, we know that we're bringing impact into the world and things will start to fall into place. I know that especially with my business too. And as we built Alibi and and my former business before is that anytime I, I shift out of that alignment in some way and try to follow what someone else or investor or whatever anybody is trying to tell us to do, um, we usually lose sight of, do- we also start not doing well in general as a business, um, which, you know, of course, uh, but it's definitely something that is is hard to learn as an early entrepreneur, early business owner is that, you know, it got to sometimes put stuff. I know my friend Kate Northrup, she always says you can put on your universe to-do list and your to-do list and just making sure that you're putting that out into the world. Um, and not like putting that pressure on yourself too, as a business owner that like, you must find that resource. Like sometimes the resource is going to come to you. Um, I know today I was on a call with somebody that totally, I wouldn't have thought would be giving me an introduction to an investor for our business. And she was like, Oh, have you talked to this person? And I was like, well, I'm glad I just talked about how we needed more that we haven't finished our fundraise, but it's like, you just have to put that stuff out there and be authentic and real with people. And then the things just come randomly into, into play for you. Um, so I, I love that. Well, has there been a specific, I know you mentioned a few resources that have come your way, but has there been a specific resource or book that's really helped you um, along the way as a business owner? Oh, there've just been so many, you know how it is. You dive in and you just kind of absorb all of it. Um, oddly, this is going to be a really strange business owner book, but I make a point to read The Alchemist once a year. Mm. Um, I, I kind of piggybacking on what you were just saying. I know it's fiction, but it's based on the universal premise that what we need, our treasure, is already here. We don't have to mm. go literally around the world like the little Mm -hmm. boy or the teenager in there did to find it. Um, And I find I can get bogged down in the weeds of the doing. And when I did get disconnected from the mindset and the heart set, I just go back to the book and I'm like, okay, I'm back again. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I always love asking this question because I feel like it's never the resource that I think a lot of times we think starting a business, it's going to be in a business book or I need a business degree or like whatever. It's never that. That's usually like your your really helpful resource that gets you to where you're going. 
Um, I know that even when I'm like suggesting podcasts to people, it's never like the real businessy podcast that like, you know, helped me or whatever. It's usually something a little off, but was helping me with something that I needed to conquer a fear or an issue that was coming up in business um, that I needed to address that really was not like the tactical stuff. It's oftentimes more of the feeling around it or the fear or whatever um, there. That's usually where we're, where we need the most support and, um, you know, uh, support and container holding in some ways too. Um, for sure. Oh, I love that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna add that to one of my favorite books that has been suggested on this podcast as a, as a resource for well, business, so. and I'll tell you, um, you know, I was a senior in high school this year and she had to do summer reading and she was struggling of what to pick. And I took, I swooped in with the opportunity, went straight to the bookshelf, pulled it off the shelf and said, here, read that. <laughs> and so now yeah. I'm a 46 year old who relies on this book annually to reset my heart compass. And mm -hmm. I have a 17 year old who's now consumed it. And I know every time I read it, I take different things away. And I know that it's going to help her frame how to make choices about what happens after graduation. So really powerful stuff that we just have to keep consuming. If you find the power, keep consuming it. I love that. If you, oh yes, that continuing, like, people love to read, you know, fictional books and sometimes we'll reread them over and over again. Um, but we don't always look at that as something that can really support our ourselves and our mindset. And that, uh, you know, it, it helps us to see too, like, where were we like a few years ago when we read this and now we've read it again. And like, where are we? And just the different journey that we're on. Um, I love that. Well, and it, I, it oh, also removes, um, removes ownership. Mm. Right. I, it's not a book that's telling me what I should think, what I should do. There's no steps mm -hmm. involved. Mm -hmm. um, I don't, uh, you know, it's not a book that was telling my 17 year old, here's how you start your life. <laughs> it mm. removes that, that personal bias that we have about ourselves and allows us to step into somebody else's story while reframing our mindset. Yeah, yeah. for sure. And I think a lot of times we can get bogged down with those specific steps. It's like if I don't follow this step, then I'm either mad at myself that I didn't follow that step or I feel guilty that I didn't follow that step or all the things that we put on ourselves. But when you're seeing it through the lens of someone else and their experience, you can relate to that. And that's why storytelling is so important and so valuable and why it works really well for children too. And why we probably should have more of it in our, in our lives as adults, um, because you are able to see that and what I'm going to read in that book versus you read and what you get away from it is so different. Just like when we listen to music the our feeling on the lyrics or the feels or whatever or even a movie that we're watching like everybody takes something different away um i think that's one of the things that i love right now of the stage with my daughter because she's really starting to like to read finally she really likes it now and so just reflecting on the books that we're reading or the stories that are being told and she's like well I was interested that this happened in the story or I'm surprised this happened or did you know that this happened in this? But it just gives you that. I think we forget to reflect a lot on stuff that we consume um, as we get older. And I think that that's something that kids do a really good job of. Um, so I always try to lean into that with her and remind and myself of how cool it is. By the way, that is the parenting journey. Yeah. Right. We don't start our parenting journey with a list as long as our arm of boxes to check. Mm -hmm. We start our parenting journey with a dream and a vision of the adult that we have a deep desire to raise the quality and the characteristics of the human being that we are raising. Mm -hmm. So that is our journey. And so we always need to come back to that because the real life experience of they're refusing to put their bowl in the sink after dinner, throws a cog in the wheel, but it's not defining our entire parent-child relationship. It's just a step along the way of learning how to interact with each other, respect each other, and move, and move forward. Yeah. I agree. It's 
It's so parenting is just such a journey and, and always, I feel like I learn something new every day. Um, but I think that's the important thing is to be mindful of the fact that one, it is a journey. You're not going to know all of that stuff. And then two, that there's a lot of resources out there that you can lean into, um, like your courses and, and like other stuff out there that can help you when you're going, I'm not sure what I need to be doing to make this better right now, or um, even being proactive about it. I know it's hard as a parent to be proactive about things that come up, um, but I think a lot of people want to be in general. So when we can and we can find those good resources, it can be, it can be really valuable. And speaking of your courses, um, what has been the one course that you found to be your favorite to create? Mm. So I have on-demand digital courses, and um, I also have a live course program. Um, uh, my favorite digital course is by far my American Sign Language course. It's called Sign to Speak, the Communication Bridge. It blends um, a lot of my educational loves, uh, linguistics and American Sign Language, and of course, empowering kids with a voice before they have one. So um, that course has was definitely my favorite to create. It encompasses 24 signs that match the 24 words we say the most to our kids over the first two years of life. And it breaks mm -hmm. it down one sign per day for three weeks. So you're building the habit and you're not overwhelmed. It's five minutes a day. And one of the things we've noticed as educators post COVID is that our COVID toddlers are late to speak. They're late to, um, they might be late to put long strings of phrases together. Mm -hmm. And so they're frustrated mm -hmm. because their brain cognition and their receptive language is right on point. And they've yeah. got a lot that they're thinking and a lot they want to say. So mm -hmm. a lot of parents, not they don't have babies anymore they have two-year-olds and they're taking this course and they're saying oh my gosh all of a sudden my child is crying less and communicating more makes me so happy well you know it's i we were worried during the pandemic too because my son was at that like pivotal moment and i know that every kid develops you know differently than the other so i was trying not to like reflect my daughter's like status onto my son um, but we did find that he needed a little extra help with that. And so we got him this amazing um, uh, speech therapist that's been so great to help him. And now he doesn't stop talking and he has so many words to share with us. And it was just all right here. And he, but he was just really frustrated with not being able to communicate everything and get it out and, and some of the phrasing of the words. And it didn't necessarily help that they were wearing masks. And even the teachers were like, you know, it was hard for us to, to always understand this year. They're like, oh, we can like totally understand and, you know, see. And he very much was, you know, doing a little bit better with us at home when we were able to talk without a mask on and, and gather that. But it was hard for a lot of kids at that age. Um, but he he's thriving right now. So if your kid has gone through that, it's definitely something they, can, they will overcome. Um, but it's hard, you know, when it, when you're trying to navigate that as a parent, for sure. Yeah, in different huge. ways that you can communicate. Oh, goodness. Well, that I just am getting so much out of this conversation <laughs> as a parent. So thank you. Um, I wanted to ask you to do you have any further courses coming out this year or anything else that is really exciting that's coming out for, for you as a business owner? So 2023 is very exciting. Um, in January, on January 3rd, I'll be launching my podcast and it is called Raising Gen Z. It's a core for parenting podcast for pandemic moms, parenting post pandemic. And so I'm thrilled. I'm really excited to be able to bring the voice of mom, of educator, and then bring in other moms who have also been through this journey and what they've learned along the way. So that's extremely exciting for me. Um, the trailer is up. It's there to be listened to and people can follow now and then listen later. And then also at early January, 2023, um, my live program for toddler moms, I, I will open the doors for that again. And that is mm. an eight week program where we do mindset, 
heart set and skill set work to that. really transform the way you and your child communicate inside your home and set them up with the skills they need to be kindergarten ready. Mm, I love that. I feel like there's so much out there that is either for the kid or directly like only focused on the kid and not necessarily on the parent and what they're going through and how they could, you know, what they need support with, but also tactical ways to help support the child too. I know when I was, um, you know, I first started out as a parent and, and everything, I, I wasn't sure also which resources are like, that I feel good about or that I wanted to lean into. And you just have no, I mean, I, all the perspective I had that I thought I would be as a parent is definitely different than I am now. Um, but I think that being able to hear about certain resources and connect with people that create them um, are so important for us to decide which one do we feel. So I encourage everybody that's listening today to this episode, if you've really felt like, oh, I really like what she's saying. And this is, you know, something that I would include into my life. Or you think that there's a friend that you have that is, you know, just starting out in their parenting journey that could really use a resource like this. I think this is one of those great things that you can even gift to, to friends and family that um, they could really gain a lot of value out of. So we'll definitely link all of, all of the stuff for, for Kara today in the show notes, but I did want to, as we start to close out today, ask you um, one more question that I love asking all of our guests, but what impact or legacy are you wanting to leave on the world? Wow. Well, this circles all the way back to my deep desire. Like I have a t-shirt that says world ready kids will change the world. Mm -hmm. That is the legacy that I have a deep desire to leave that we raise kids. I mean, kindergarten readiness, it's important, but why is it so important? Because if they're ready, then they continue to learn and grow and expand through every stage of their educational journey. And then they become adults who add value to the world. And our world is suffering. And we need adults who are going to add value. And this is a generational shift. It has to be, right? We have an opportunity here. COVID devastated our world in a lot of ways. But those of us who stepped up said, we also see the opportunity. Mm -hmm. This is an opportunity to serve these COVID babies who are now toddlers, but it's also an opportunity to change the way that we engage with and support our birth to five kids forever. So yeah. that generation after generation, we're just making our world a better place. Mm -hmm. It's it's so important. And I'm so glad that we have amazing people like you working on this because I I always tell, I have a good friend that works in the childcare space and has created a platform for focusing on that birth to five, but for helping uh, people to find childcare and for advocating for the, the childcare workers. And it's such, it's not, it's not my fight that I want to fight or my, my passion. And I'm so glad that there are people working on it because it directly impacts my life as a, as a parent, um, and will continue to impact my life further. Um, and I think that it's so important that we have people that are really passionate about focusing on, on this. And it, it's a huge issue that's affecting so many areas. I'm sure we could talk about it forever. Um, so many areas of society and just generally and parenthood and, and everything that's going on. Um, but there's so many ways that, you know, businesses can support parents that then they can support, you know, their, their children in this, in this journey. Um, so I appreciate you and the legacy that you want to leave. Um, but where is the best place for our listeners to find you? And then we'll definitely link them in the show notes. Absolutely. So I'm most active on the Instagram account at core for parenting. It's the number four in the middle. Um, and then again, I highly encourage you to go listen to the podcast trailer. And as if you follow and subscribe there, then you're going to know everything. As soon as it drops, you're going to have my voice every Tuesday at 11 a.m. coming into your ears. Um, sometimes I'll even do mommy meditations, right? Like trying to ground us and calm us. Yeah. Um, 
So I, I really think if you want to know who I am, what I do, why I do it, and how that could potentially fit into your life, that's the best place to find me. I love it. Well, we are definitely going to link that. I know all of the listeners today, at least most of you, um, are a parent and you can definitely relate to a lot that we've discussed today. And so I encourage you to go and check out Core for Parenting and everything that Kara is putting out into the world. We'll link it all in the show notes. But thank you so much for being here today. It has been a true pleasure. Having conversations with moms and business owners like you is one of my favorite things to do. Well, I appreciate that. I've, I've gained so much from this too, and I'm excited to get this out to our listeners. So thank you everybody for listening. And today to LOB Radio, we will be back next week with another entrepreneur that is doing amazing things in the world that will help give you tips and tricks or actionable ways to um, support your own business or to reflect and think about ways that you can do business in this world. Thank you so much for listening today. And definitely go out and check out everything that Kara is doing at the show notes at allobee.com. Thank you so much.